Shabbat Hachalam. Shabbat Hachalam. Greetings, brothers and sisters. We give praise to Ahaya, Ashere Ahaya, and our Dona Yache, Meshiaka, and our mother, Ruaka Kwadoshi. Today we're going to be discussing what is sound doctrine. We're going to start at Titus chapter 2, verse 1. Titus chapter 2, verse 1. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. Paul taught Titus and Timothy sound doctrine. We know through precepts we get understandings. So let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5. Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience, and of faith on faith. So this is what the goal of the commandment is, because he said the end of the commandment is charity. So all things must lead to charity, to be walking in sound doctrine, and we're going to build on that. All right, let's get edification on what charity is through precept. Colossians three fourteen, please. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. So we notice you can see that charity, which is love, is the end goal to get to in sound doctrine. And we can build more on charity to understand it in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4 to 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. It is not puffed up. Do if not behave itself unseemly. That encompasses all the commandments <laughs> and the fruits of the spirit, because we do all things that are well pleasing. Continue. Seeking not her own. Mm. It's not easily provoked. Think of no evil. Right. Well, notice charity is a female. And when we get to Hermes, we'll understand the twelve Holy Spirits. Continue, please. Rejoice if not in iniquity but rejoiceth in truth. Bear of all things, believing all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. So we see how charity is the bond of perfectness, is the end of the commandments. And we're going to see she's the last holy virgin that we need to get to the kingdom. If we look at Shepherd of Hermas, parable 9, starting at chapter 15, verse 1 to verse 3. Declare to me, sir, say I, the names of the virgins, and the women that are clothed in black garments. Here saith he the names of the more powerful virgins, those that are stationed at the corners. The first is faith, the second continence, and the third power, and the fourth long suffering. But the other stationed between them have these names simplicity, guilelessness, Purity, cheerfulness, truth, understanding, concord, and love. And he that beareth these names in the names of the son of Elohim shall be able to enter into the kingdom of Elohim. We see here the angel of repentance shows the process going from the beginning having faith and building through each holy virgin to attain unto love. Now, we're going to go to Peter and see Peter talking about the same thing, breaking it down better for us because the keys were committed unto him. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 5 to 10. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 5. And beside this, given all diligence, add to your faith virtue and to your virtue knowledge. He's explaining the process. So you have faith, now you have to be diligent to grow in the next step, which is virtue. Continue. And to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance. You have to learn the law and get into the fruits to continue the growth. And to temperance, patience, and to patience, holiness. Now you're getting close to Allah. <laughs> and to holiness, brotherly kindness. Now you're exemplifying Allah. So it's amazing. You get close right. and Allah is starting to shine through you. Right. And to brotherly kindness, charity. And there we see the end goal. <laughs> Because Allah is love. Continue. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Dona Yache Mashiach. Now we understand what the knowledge of Mashiach is. The fruits of the Spirit, because these are the things that we need to be fruitful and abound in us. This sound doctrine comes from our Lord, and it's essential to learn of Him 
that we may understand. Matthew eleven twenty eight to thirty. Matthew chapter eleven verse twenty eight. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This yoke is necessary for us to learn of Christ and attain unto the goal of love and sound doctrine through enduring the growth process that Peter showed us we have to go through to get to the end goal of charity. We have to go through this step by step that we may be clothed with all twelve holy virgins, lacking nothing to enter the kingdom. Yet, if we lack these fruits, Peter admonishes us in Second Peter chapter 1 verse 9. Can you read that please? But he that lacketh these things is blind, and cannot see afar off, and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. So enduring the process of sound doctrine through humility and meekness to attain step by step unto charity shows that we remember we were purged of our old sins, not making grace of none effect. Now if we can't see this, Second Corinthians 4 and 3 shows us who has blinded us. Second Corinthians 4 and 3 But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. In whom the Elohim of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Least the light of the glorious gospel of Messiah, who is the image of Elohim, should shine unto them. It's Satan. Right. He's blinded the mind through lust. Lest we should awake unto righteousness and sin not. Now we have understanding of what sound doctrine is. And we touch back at Peter. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 10. Please. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligent to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. Indeed, if we do these things, we shall not fall into condemnation. Now, if we give diligence to this learning process, we will fall along the way and get back up, as a just man would. But eventually, through that diligence, these fruits will be in us, and we will make our election sure, being clothed with the twelve holy virgins. But if we don't endure with diligence, some one of the twelve evil women will keep a hold on us to keep us from entering the kingdom. Can we read a Hermes Parable 9, chapter 15, verse 3? The Shepherd of Hermes Parable 9, 15 and 3. Here saith he likewise the names of the women that wear the black garments. Of these also four are more powerful than the rest. The first unbelief, the second intemperance, the third disobedience, the fourth deceit. And their followers are called sadness, wickedness, wantonness, irascibility, falsehood, folly, slander, hatred. The servant of Elohim that beareth these names shall see the kingdom of Elohim but shall not enter into it. We have to take admonition on this. Now we understand what we have to do in sound doctrine. We can now look and see what the world is going to be doing and stand aloof from it. 1 Timothy 4 Verse 1 and 2. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with an hot iron. Let's look at Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 3 and 4 to get more understanding. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap themselves teachers, having itching ears. We are in the latter times. What Paul spoke about is happening. Right. Folks are having multiple teachers that are teaching the things they want to hear rather than finding true teachers that teach sound doctrine for them to grow by. Continue. And they shall turn away with their ears from the truth, and shall return unto fables. Today there truly are fables that are foundational beliefs for the modern religions today. We have to be mindful and stand aloof from these things. Let's look at Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 7. 
2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despiseth of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of Elohim, having a form of holiness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. For of this sort they are which creep into houses and leave captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts. Never learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. We have to be mindful not to walk in these spirits and to be sure that we don't become ones that study a lot but never come to the knowledge of the truth, which is the love of Christ that surpasses all knowledge. In Ephesians 3 and 19. And to know the love of Messiah, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of Allah. And that fullness of Allah is in the fruits of the Spirit that Christ Yahche brings forth in us. Now that we understand these things, let's continue our understanding of sound doctrine. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 5 to 11, please. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 5. Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned, from which some having swerved have turned aside unto vain jangling desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say, nor where they affirm. But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. The law identifies sin, hence it's good if we use it lawfully. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the unholy and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. That confirms sound doctrine is keeping the commandments and bearing the fruits of the Spirit. Because all these things were sins. So sound doctrine is to walk in all righteousness with the fruits. Continue. According to the glorious gospel of the blessed Elohim, which was committed to my trust. And we can confirm that this true gospel, this true faith, does bring forth the fruits of the Spirit in Colossians 1 verse 46. Colossians chapter 1 verse 4. Since we heard of your faith in Meshiach Yache, and of the love which ye have to all the saints, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before in the world of the truth of the gospel, which is come unto you, as it is in all the world, and bringeth forth fruit, as it doeth also in you, since the day ye heard of it, and knew the grace of Allah in truth. You know this. Once you know the grace of Allah in truth, it brings forth fruit. Right. Let's get understanding of that grace. Romans chapter 3, verse 23 to 26, verse 28 and 31. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of Allah, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Yache, whom Allah has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of Allah to declare I say at this time his righteousness that he might be just and the justify of him which believeth in Yache verse 28 therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law so there we see it's not the law of animal sacrifices that justifies us but it's faith in the blood of Christ Yache for sins that are past that justifies us. It goes on to say in verse 31, Do we then make void the law through faith? Well, I am forbid, yea, we establish the law. 
We establish the law through faith, because the commandments must be kept by faith, that we may be found as doers of good when we appear at the judgment. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10 and verse 9 For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Wherefore we labor, that whether present or absent we may be accepted of him. So you see, we labor in keeping the law by faith to be accepted, because faith without works is dead. And, Romans chapter 2, verse 11, For there is no respect of persons with Allah Hayim. Verse 6, Who will render to every man according to his deeds? Verse 7, To them who by patient continuance in well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. Verse 8, But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. Verse 9. Tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil of the Jew first, and also the Gentile. Verse 10. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good to the Jew first, and also to the Gentile. So we see our work dictates our rewards. Romans chapter 2 verse 12 and verse 16. For as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law, and as many have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. Verse 16 In the day when Allah shall judge the secrets of men by Yahche Christ according to my gospel. So understanding this grace and truth leads us to bring forth fruit, knowing that we are going to be judged according to our works, whether good or bad, before the judgment seat of Christ. Let's close out with some admonitions on sound doctrine. Titus chapter 2, verse 1 to 15. But speak thou the things which have come sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience, the aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of Allah be not blasphemed. Young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded, in all things showing thyself a pattern of good works, in doctrine showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters, and to please them well in all things, not answering again, not purloining, but showing all good fidelity, that they may adorn the doctrine of Allah Hayyam, our Saviour, in all things. For the grace of Allah Hayyam that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men teaching us that, denying unholiness and worldly lusts, we shall live soberly, righteously, and alahayamly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great alahayam and our Savior, Yahche Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. These things speak, and exhort and rebuke with all authority let no man despise thee first clement chapter 21 verse 6 to 8 let us fear the lord yache christ whose blood was given for us let us reverence our rulers let us honor our elders let us instruct our young men in the lesson of the fear of Allah. let us guide our women toward that which is good let them show forth their lovely disposition of purity. Let them prove their sincere affection of gentleness. Let them make manifest the moderation of their tongue through their silence. Let them show their love, not in factitious preferences, but without partiality towards all them that fear Allah Hayyam in holiness. Let our children be partakers of the instruction which is in Christ. 
Let them learn how lowliness of mind prevaileth with Allah Hayyam. What power chase love hath with Allah Hayyam. How the fear of him is good and great and saveth all them that walk therein in a pure mind with holiness. These are the things that we will grow in doing through sound doctrine. Shalom.